boom wagwan and welcome back to the channel guys my name is Tevin and today we're gonna get right into it and get to talking about my turbo build setup As I said in my previous videos, I've accumulated a lot of turbo parts for my turbo setup and today we're going to be reviewing all of it. We're going to start from the basic, which will be like timing equipments and uh, stuff to help the motor handle that boost. And then we're going to go into like turbocharged piping, turbochargers, turbo manifold, blow off valve, etc. So I can't wait to show you guys and let's get right into it. All right, so this video is basically a guide to turbocharge your K-Swap car. So if you have a EK, EG, DC2, Integra, whatever, this is a guide for it. I'm starting off from the basics. So again, a lot of this stuff is optional. So what I'm, I'm about to tell you right now is optional if you want to do it or not. But a good starter point is to get your timing equipment. Timing chains, timing guides, tensioner, um, oil pump tensioner, oil pump, those kind of stuff. But again, this is optional. A lot of people don't do it. I'm personally not going to do it, but it's something to know. If you have an engine running for more than five years, beating on it every day, your daily driver, it's very good to think about doing this before you even turbocharge in your car. Fair enough. So let's just jump right into the timing equipment parts. I have some here, so I'll just bring them out and show you what you will need and show you what, they're do what they will do. So let's get right into it. All right, so here I have all the timing equipment needed for your uh, turbocharged setup. Let's start off with the first thing, which would be like the timing guide. So this is your top mount timing guide. Uh, this is the uh, K20Z3 timing guide. It's a little bit longer than the other timing guide. Like, it's a little bit longer than the K24 and the K20 timing guide. So this is what you will need. The part number is right here if you're interested in it. Yep. Um, the next thing you will need for that is... Depending on your if your car if your engine is a K20 or a K24, mm -hmm. you will need that specific that specific chain for it. So this is a K24 timing chain. Uh, again, a good thing to note if you're running a K24 bottom end with a K20 top end, you will need whatever bottom end it is. So if you're running a K24 bottom end with a K20 top you will need a K24 timing chain. If you're running a K20, if you're running a K20 bottom and running a K24 top end, I don't know why you'll do that, but if you're doing that, you will need a K20 timing chain. And this is a K24 timing chain because I'm running a straight K24 and the part number is this. So yeah. The next step on the chopping block would be your tensioner. This is a OEM uh, K24, no, OEM K20 or K24 tensioner. I think they, they both use the same tensioner. So yeah, this is a brand new OEM K20, K24 tensioner. Again, you can use like Inline Pro. They're pretty good with their tensioners as well. Or you can use like hybrid racing or whatever tensioner you use. I prefer to go OEM. That's just my personal preference. Um, but you can go either or. Uh, the next thing on the chopping block is the guides. So these are just OEM uh, K-Series timing guide. Um, I don't think there's a difference between the K20 and K24 timing guides. Um, so I got them both. And the part number is this. I'll try to give you as much part number as possible. Just pause it and you can just, you know, write it down or whatever. And that is the straight side and this is the curved side. Okay. The next you'll need is, I opted for the drag cartel lower timing, ch timing chain guide. So this actually helps 
is not just for style or brand it actually helps so when you put on your timing chain let's say your timing chain is loose it it dropped for some reason um, this would actually catch it and keep it in groove or the tension the tension of your timing chain just loosen up this would actually keep it in check instead of your timing chain just dropping down so this would actually keep it in check there is not a part number for this but you can find it at drugcartel.com and um, you'll be all set this is one of the key ingredients to making that good mid-range horsepower is the 50 degree RBC cam gear. Um, I don't have a partner for part number for this, but it comes off of the K20A2 engine. They come with a 50 degree cam gear. I think the K24 comes with a 25 degree cam gear. What essentially what does the 50 degree cam gear does is give it um, maximum degrees in cam angle at like mid-range horsepower where you need do that cam angle the most so you would make a great 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 mid-range horsepower and then it doesn't really affect in the high rpm range because the cam angle actually tapers off as you go up in rpm so that's really good for mid-range horsepower um the next thing I, I forgot where i was so the next thing you will need is this is a time this is a oil pump chain tensioner the k20 and k24 use the, the, the same um, oil pump timing chain tensioner so either k24 or k20 this will work hand in hand um, I don't have a part number for that as well but I do have the part number for that chain so the oil pump runs on a chain as well so the oil pump chain is this right here. And I think the K20 and K24 uses the same oil pump chain. So everything brand new, you, you need it. And then I opted for not only a type S oil pump, but is a ported, what is it? It's a ported unit two fabrication oil pump. So it is a type S oil pump, but it is um, pulled apart, ported for more oil flow, and um, it's cut right here for a perfect fitment for your K24. Now, if you're running a K20, you will not need to do that modification with cut cutting right here. You will just put it on straight. As a matter of fact, the K20 will already have this pump in it, but if you want it to, to be ported, you would have to take it off and port it out, put it back together and put it back on the car. K24, you need to cut out this groove. K20, you don't have to. So I think that's all for timing. Now I, I have something I need to show you guys as well. And that's an option as well. But because I got the oil pump from Unit 2 Fabrication, I also got their baffle oil pan. So I'm going to show you guys that right now. This is the Unit 2 Fabrication oil pan. It's your basic standard um, K20 type S oil pan. I also have a bung right here. I told him to give me a bung for my turbo drain. I don't think I'll be utilizing this right now because I'm not putting on this oil pan, oil pan on the engine I have in the car. I will touch bases on that in further down in the video. But for now, this is the unit two oil pan with a baffled oil pan inside. It has one two one two three four i think it's got four windows in there so when this sits down with your oil pan sitting in this in the middle your oil won't be slushing all over the place you will have proper oil feel all throughout the your driving experience especially on the track where you have to go into hard corners the oil won't go to one place and then starve your oil pump it will stay in the I would say basket and give you give, give your engine proper oil supply at all times so that's what i opted for and um yeah but i will touch bases on this these i will not be using on the engine i have in the car right now but i'll touch bases on that in uh later down in this video so let's just move on so those are the timing equipment you'll need again it's optional you might not need it. Some people, you know, have been running engines for five years, beating on it every day. 
so it's good to do it but some of you just have a daily maybe drive it on the weekends you probably not, don't need it um you can just drop your turbocharged kit on and make five six hundred horses and you're good to go well that's not the case and this is a guide so i think it's best to just show you how it's done properly and um and we can get the ball in the road so why not just go into fueling that's a fun part so let's go into fueling my fueling setup is you know what let's just put it on the table and here we have it so before i get into all of this with any turbocharged build you will want a good fuel system again let me repeat with any turbocharged build you would want a good fuel system reason why a turbocharger is forced air induction you're giving it a lot of air in a compact compact manner so with that being said you want to compensate all that air with a lot of fuel right you want to compensate a lot of air with a lot of fuel you can't put a turbocharge kit on with like your stock fuel injectors with stock lines and stock fuel pump i mean you can but think about it how long is that gonna last with newer cars yes it's possible with old, with your old 1995, 1998, 1997 cars, we didn't have turbochargers. So, I mean, we had turbochargers, but it wasn't, it wasn't this efficient. It, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. It's, it's really weird to to say because I know a lot of you might not understand what I'm saying. But you can't put on just slap on a turbocharger and try and make 500 horsepower with your stock 1995 lines and stock 1995 pump stock 1995 injectors you have to do some modifications so that's what we're going to get into right now and uh, the first on the chopping block is i opted for the 2200 cc injectors from alpha injectors um they were on a mean sale and uh, i got a piece of the sale so uh we got in the 22 injector alpha alpha injectors it's pretty cool I like I like how it looks I really like how it looks it looks kind of fancy <laughs> but the the plugs that they give you is like the Bosch connectors I have the V I think it's a V4 or V17 um, inject um, plug-ons so I just bought um, an adapter plug that plugs on the Bosch injectors and then can plug right into my um my wire loom so i don't have to cut and, and splice anything at all it just plugs right in um why did i go 2200 cc injectors the bigger the better my nigga <laughs> you know what i'm saying the bigger the better um i'm not the one to be like i and i don't really like to be running the car on like 90 percent duty cycle while i'm in uh full out full out full out pass i would rather be like in the 60 percent 75 percent duty cycle where i know i have a lot of a lot more room to grow if i want so these are not bad um i've not put them in the car to see how they operate yet but we're gonna find out oh these are the adapters i was telling you about these are the bosch connectors but i do not have this in my wire room so i would have to cut and splice it but that's not the case i would not be using these because i already got the adapters that go right to my wire loom so that's our next plus those adapters i got from i think it was ebay i have a list of everything i have um i didn't specify where i got it from but it was ebay it was 16 dollars for it so that's one the next thing upgrade is the clean injectors fuel pump hanger mod there's a lot of easy way to do this i'm just not that guy so i got this from clean injection um I saw a lot of reviews on it it's really good 
they fit in i think they fit in the ek chassis as well and they fit in the dc2 and they fit in the eg chassis um don't quote me on it i think just look them up cleaninjectors.com um so what is it let's let's talk about it this sits right down in your oem um fuel tank oem placement there is no modification done to put this in the only thing though your lines running to this is different so your stock lines is i think it dash six in but it's a little bit smaller when you look on the orifices inside so you're not running true dash six you're running like a little bit smaller than that which is a kind of restrictor when you're thinking about it for your turbo build it's it is a um, constrictor um you can make a lot easier power with a bigger oil line flowing flowing to your fuel rail so yeah that's the thing um let's get right into it so your feed is going to be a dash eight so i'm running dash eight lines right to my fuel rail with a 100 micro mesh um, stainless steel fuel filter i do not have it here my guys are going to get it for me so dash eight to the fuel rail and i'm running a return style which is a dash six return so dash eight feed dash six return that's all there is to it so if you get this you have to upgrade your lines as well all right uh the next thing that you get with this and this is optional you can either plug in back your stock wire loom into this and it will function as normally or you can do the what the, the fuel pump relay upgrade again there's a lot easier way to do this but this is a plug and play kit i don't have to cut anything i don't like cutting into my wire loops because that would just cause more problems i like to plug and play that's it my nigga <laughs> so this wire loom now this fuel pump relay upgrade is optional when you buy this and uh, let me tell you the price on it so it was only 290 dollars for this and this so if it's only this it's a lot cheaper two of them 290 shit can't beat that so what does what this does is one you got two ends you got three connectors negative negative source or ground source this goes into your this goes into this right there let me see let me help you guys out so this goes into that like that and then from your engine harness not engine but in your 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 harness for your car goes into this and then this goes to our grounds and that's it now what what this does is allow you to run those big fuel pumps so those big hellcat 525 550 550 i think it's 550 don't quote me those big hellcat fuel pumps you'll be able to run it with no problem with you without you burning up lines burning up uh, fuses or whatever this will allow you to run those big fuel pump no problem and it's a lot of line space to just run this back through the car and hide it somewhere so it won't be seen you get what i'm saying so you have a clean look and that's it so you'll be able to run that big fuel pump you have the dash eight and dash six return you have the 20 2200 cc injectors what more do you want yes there's one more thing you will want a burton racing flex fuel kit so this is Burton Burton Racing Flex Fuel Kit. I uh, bought it with the bracket so I can mount it easily. This attached to your return line. It's a flex fuel sensor. And then they will give you actually, they will give you a harness for it. So this plugs into this right here, right? And then this run inside the car. One line will go to a 12, volt yeah one line will go to a 12 one line will go to a grounds this will go to a 12 volt source and then this goes right to your ecu plug and play because this just plugs into your ecu 
this plugs into probably your cigarette light, cigarette lighter fuse and you just find uh, grounds for this and you are done. And then all you got to do is go on the computer while you're tuning and tune in the, the E85 content. That's it. That is it. I love plug and play. I don't know about anybody else, but I love plug and play. Anything that makes my life easier and simpler for all for it. And this kit was only, this kit was only $175. You can't beat that. You, you can't, you just can't. So all of this is my fuel setup. I don't have the lines here. here. My guys were, that's gonna do the fabrication, they're gonna be doing it. And um, the fuel pump, I'm, I am going to be running the Hellcat fuel pump. They're gonna get it as well while they're getting the lines. And um, I'll be all good with fuel. So if you're looking for big fuel setup, and guys, this fuel setup is up for like a thousand, this fuel setup will hold up to a thousand horsepower. This fuel setup will hold up to a thousand horses. Maybe over, but I'm just benchmark a thousand. If you want a thousand horsepower and you have all of this, you're good to go. You're good to go. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's my fuel setup. And again, I am not sponsored by any of these guys. Not Burton, not Clean Injection, not Alpha. I'm not sponsored. I just like their product and I'm um, willing to support. Yeah, let's do it. So it's getting, it's getting dangerous right now. So it's getting dangerous. First, let's start off with Turbo Manifold. This is not your typical Sidewinder. I have nothing against a Sidewinder, but the top mount, the top mount, turbo manifold always look a lot cleaner if you get what i'm saying the side one will look mean the turbo is right there in your face and um yeah it, it looks good but i prefer the sleek look of looking uniform so the top mount turbo manifold for the k series it sits behind it sits behind the, the valve cover just just it's, it, it sits like it's factory in my opinion it just sits behind the valve cover with one pipe or two pipes running out like this and it and it just looks clean it just it just looks clean and i i like that so i opted for the plm top mount turbocharged exhaust ma uh, exhaust manifold and to my surprise it it, it looks good it really looks good. Um, there's no pipe touching each other. So the clearance is good. The only clearance is that, that's really close is right here. But again, it's not touching. Um, it, use, it utilizes two waste gates, two 44 or 45 millimeter waste gates. And you can run either a T3 or a T4 um, turbo. Um, flange on it so you can utilize either or i'm running the t3 i don't really care which one is either the t3 or t4 i don't really care which one i run but it was easier to get the t3 so i got the t3 um it's not that heavy but it's really nice i really like it i really like it and there's not much to be said about it i have not seen any reviews on it but I mocked it up on an engine I had, and um, it sits pretty good. I like where the placement is, and I see a lot of clearance for the, the screamer pipes and the wastegate pipes running out. So I don't think I'll have a problem with it. With that being said, again, this is the PLM top mount um, turbo manifold for the K-Series. Let's talk about turbo. Let me get this over and get this over. So the turbo I'll be running is not this one. <laughs> the turbo I'll be running is definitely not this one. Um, I was going to run this and it is a max speeding rod um, turbo, which is like a GT, like a GT 35 replica. Um, it looks good. The, the make of it, 
the shaft plate is minimal there's not see it's not touching or anything it's not touching it spins freely spins nice i like it but i opted out to go a different route i'm going to insert the picture right now of the route i'll be going i'll be going the pulsar gtx 30 i think it's 3582 uh, don't quote me again i don't remember which one it is but i'm going to pulsar pulsar turbo pulsar turbo and um, it is slightly bigger than this but i think i'll get a quicker spool time and um i i'll be able to make more horsepower out of the pulsar turbo than this one um if anything i'll keep it i'll keep it but who knows if if somebody wants it i'll sell it but um i'll have it as a backup there's no problem with that both turbo this and the pulsar is gonna be uh no i'm lying this is a journal bearing turbo the pulsar turbo is a twin ball bearing turbo so yeah it'll be nice and this turbo actually comes with a four bolt exhaust flange but i got an adapter to get it to work with a v-band so it's a four bolt to a v-band and uh that's how i would run it but let's let's see um this turbo is rated for 600 horses the Pulsar Turbo that I'm getting is rated for 900. So let's let you know just let's let's play it and see what's going on. Um, the tur the Pulsar Turbo is not in yet. It's coming next week. Um, yeah, for turbos, I am going to run the oil fill. The oil feed is going to be a dash four line with a restrictor in it. Pro I think it's a 0 0.35 restrictor or a let's just call it one millimeter um restrictor and it's going to run the old standard size t3 oil drain and it's going to go right to my valve cover now so the turbo drain that i'm going to be running is a standard t3 flange on the turbo with a dash 10 i think line going to run straight to my valve cover side which i'm going to utilize the jack spanier racing um turbo drain at the side so this is gonna where the, the the chain tensioner sits this is gonna replace that cover and then when i put it on there i'm gonna attach the the oil drain to this 10 in fitting right here and that will be where I'm, my oil drain is going to go for the turbo see that's why i was telling you i'm not going to run that oil pan i'm going to save all of that time and equipment and that oil pan for knock on wood if something happens i have a next engine sitting i'll just use use that engine use the timing timing equipment stuff new oil pump and use that oil pan for that new engine that i have sitting i you know so it's it's easier than to put on everything now something happens and i have to rebuy everything for that engine now nah. let's just run it oh how it is in the car and see what happens so yeah, this is what I'm gonna replace and use this for my oil drain. Um, so yeah, this is the turbo. It's it's very well made, I'm not gonna lie. And I've seen a lot of good reviews on this turbo. So if you're thinking about running this turbo, I would highly recommend it. Um, I've seen a guy run like 800 horsepower with this turbo. I've seen a V8 guy run like 900 horses. I've seen some couple guys in Jamaica running this turbo and like a starlet with a K series in it and he's running this and he's running a good time so these turbos aren't bad but again on um, these ebay turbos they're sometimes a hit and a miss i've seen a guy like J zosh he ran a he ran uh the jack spanier um turbo he blew up the first one and then the second one he got he's running it till die kingdom come and it's good don't forget all you boosted boys they're running them shits up so listen it's a hit or miss for for certain turbos um even the good name brand turbos they 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 miss sometime but let's just see what what happens with, with with these um but that's it for turbochargers and turbo manifold this is my drain and that's it the lines for the turbo feed my guys that are going to do fabrication they're they're going to run it 
Um, I actually, I actually do have the restrictor. It's in the box somewhere. Yeah, so the restrictor I have. So this is the restrictor. If you guys don't are not familiar what a strict a restrictor is, it's basically what the name implies. It restricts oil going to the turbo. So you have one side that goes screws down in the turbo with that big pocket. And then the next side, which is a dash four AN fitting. It has a small hole. So that hole is what's restricting the oil from going in the turbo. If you run too much oil to your turbo, it will blow out the seals and then your turbo will start smoking. If you have too little of a turbo, your turbo will, I guess it will bind up for starvation. So yeah, I think that's how it works. Um, I will be utilizing the water lines because the pulsar turbo also has water lines as well so this is the drain this is the feed yeah this is the feed and then these two lines at the side here and over the next side are water lines inlet and outlet either or either way can work so you have if you run it inlet outlet or inlet outlet it works the same um so yeah, the Pulsar Turbo utilizes water lines as well. I will be running it. And I will be running Restrictor on the Pulsar Turbo as well. And I will be running the Turbo Oil Drain. Of course, why not? <laughs> so let's move on. I really hope, I really hope I'm not going too fast with this. Um, I'm trying to do this in a timely manner. But as, uh, according to that, I'm trying to give you as much detail as possible. If I have missed something, please leave it in the comment section and I'll really get back to you because um, it's so much to soak in, soak in. You get what I'm saying? It's, it's so much, it's a lot of information. So if you really are interested in a turbo build and you've reached this far in the video and you need a little more help because I didn't clarify something, reach out to me comment and i'll really get back to you so let's touch on um inner cooler so this is my inner cooler no, no. yep this is my inner cooler it's uh let me, let me measure it i never measured this so let me measure it it is a uh, two and a half inch it's two and a half inch this way and um it's a vert it's a same side in inlet and outlet in intercooler um i don't want to do what you call it vertical it's not vertical horizontal is this way vertical is that way so i'm not sure what to call it i'll just call it same side in inlet and outlet intercooler <laughs> So, yeah, um, this intercooler, the inlet and outlets are two and a half inch. There's not much to say about the, about this intercooler. Intercoolers are intercoolers, man. Like, if you're not looking to go, like, a really high number, like eight, 900 horses, this intercooler would support you up to five, 600 horses. This same intercooler. It's a CX Racing intercooler. I found it on eBay, and I bought it for, like, a hundred and something dollars. So it's really good. It's really good. It's light. It's aluminum. It supports five to six hundred horses. You can't beat it. I know a lot of guys running this and manage to get this intercooler to give them seven hundred horses. So I think that intercooler is really good. It's an eBay intercooler. Um, like yeah, yeah. PLM sells um this same size um intercooler as well and um speed factory sells them um yeah it's it's just an inner cooler is 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 whatever <laughs> um so i just want to touch on these bolts 
and these bolts are going on my uh, turbo manifold there's a studs to bolt down the turbo to the turbo manifolds and they're titanium i got them from plm as well they're really light they're smooth like screwing i would never seen a bowl like no itch it just it's, it's just smooth um i think they will really look good i don't think anybody will see them once it's on the car but they really look really look nice and i opted for these and i also got the so these are gonna go on my my head my engine head they're the ex exhaust studs titanium as well i have five and i got them from pkf what's this pkf fasteners i got them from ebay i was i was skeptical but when they arrived and i really felt the quality and really felt them they're really good they are really good so um i'm going to be running these again nobody will see them but for my peace of mind I'm gonna be like, yeah, I'm running titanium. What of it? <laughs> All right, so let's move on. So the next thing I wanna touch on is the blower valve. So let's touch on the blower valve. My blower valve and my two wastegates, they are from VS Racing. My guy over at Hunter Tuned, his YouTube channel is Hunter Tuned. He hooked me up with a good price for all of these here and um they're he's running an integra also and he's running these same wastegates and blow valve and he made 550 horses easy no problem with the wastegate no problem with the blow valve so i'm confident i will get the same results i'm really confident fingers crossed <laughs> so yes this is the it's a tile style blower valve. As you can see, it looks like a tile, a tile blower valve, but it's a VS Racing blower valve. Um, there's not much to say about it. Uh, in the box, I got some springs. I got like a 10 pound springs, an eight pound spring for the blower valve. Um, so it's really nice. I think I'll be satisfied with that. And then for the wastegates, two wastegates, two of them is 44 millimeter wastegates. Um, they are the Turbo Start Smile. Turbo Start Style. Yeah. As you can see, it looks like a Turbo Start, but it's not a Turbo Smart. It's a VS Racing. There's not, not much to it. I put in an 8 pound spring in it because that's what I want my base um, pressure to be 8 pounds. 8 pounds would roughly give me like 380 or 400 across my fingers, I don't know. So, but let's see where 8 pounds bring me and then I'm going to use the MAC Boost Solenoid to bring in the rest of the boost. This I got on Amazon. It was cheaper this way to get it without the barb because I'm going to use a and fitting for the barbs and a and fitting on the waist gates to run the vacuum lines together. Um, how does a boost solenoid works is you get two wires, one wire to a 12 volt source and the next wire to your ECU. I don't remember the pinout right now, but in a next update video, I'll be sure to tell you what the pinout is, but that's it, two wires, 12 volt source and ECU, and then your ECU picks, picks up on the, the duty pressure and then you can up it from there and adjust your 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 boost levels that way uh what else i got the speed factory four port four bar four bar boost on and uh yeah you're gonna need this to what this does is actually move your 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 map so your map is zeroed out when you wide open throttle it it will give you like up to zero this will push it further than that and make make you go into the positive level in boost and um that's all that does that that's all it does then i am getting the the intake temperature adapter from k-tuned so this is going to be welded welded on to my charge pipe 
and then the intake temperature sensor can screw down in it because you know the intake temperature sensor you can use a rubber grommet and stick it in but with boost if you're building like five pound of boost it's gonna push it right out so this is a safety thing so when you're building boost it won't push it out because this is actually welded and screwed on to your charge pipe so that is what i have so far the other little things are just fittings and this is the oil drain which is the wrong one for the turbo so i have to probably return it or just get a new one for the oil feed for my turbo i'm going to be running this i got it from amazon so how does this work this screws to your block it's the same thread as your um oil pressure sensor so it screws right down to your block then this now screws on top of that create a nice seal because as you can see here it has a rubber seal right here so once that's sandwiched to this back end it creates a seal uh, seal so you won't have any oil you know going all about the place or anything like that and then these ports one two three you can utilize them for your oil pressure sensor like I, like my AEM oil pressure sensor, I'll utilize that. And the next port I'll utilize for my oil feed for my turbo. Block off the next side and block off the this side right here. And you're good to go. I'm just going to utilize two ports, which is the oil, oil pressure gauge and my oil feed for my turbo. This is a bracket that I'm going to utilize for my mac boost solenoid how does this work yeah i guess it's wrong or i guess it's right i'm not sure but this is supposed to go right here and then mount it onto like my chassis leg or somewhere somewhere inside the engine bay now this is my favorite thing a lot of people are skeptical of like the pqy brand because it's like a china made brand but they're pretty good Right now, I've been running the PQY um, EP3 idler pulley on my car for three years. No problem. No squeaks. No loosen up thing. Not, nothing. It's really good. I've seen a bunch of guys run, run this PQY um, banging clamps on their turbocharged setup. Had no problem. So, I don't know what's, this, what's the, the niche about buying K2 and speed factory stuff and those kind of stuff there sometimes it's not necessary to buy them you're just buying a name but sometimes it's really necessary to buy it but hey i'm not the judge so this so this is how it is you're going to weld this onto your intake pipes both ends it's going to mate it mates like this this groove that you see in the middle right here this seal is going to go on it once you seal it, it's kind of hard hard to come off. If you know if you're not welded it on, it's gonna hard to pull off because it's so small. But once that seal is going gone on it, on both sides, you're gonna put this 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 um what do I say meeting ring. So it would come like this. It goes on one side, and this goes on this side, and you kind kind of meet it, kind of meet it in the middle. second I don't want to meet it because it's really hard to come off when you meet it so let me demonstrate without putting on the seals it's gonna go on it's gonna meet like this and when you put it on it's gonna real you're gonna realize that it's really tight so that's a vacuum tight. When it's on like that now, you're gonna have this. It's a collar. So you're gonna put it on like, like a collar. Let's see. So once it's on, you see like how it's moving now? Once these seals are on, it won't be moving, trust me. And once the collar is on, you got a locking pin 
I think you can put it on any side, but then you can't just push it in like that. You got to press a button and then it releases the pin down at the bottom. Press it, release it, and it goes down. And then it can't come off unless you press the button here to release it. See? You want to see, I'm trying to pull it, can't take it off. And once everything is on, it's going to be tight. It's going to be so tight, vacuum tight. There's no leaks with this. And that's what I'm going to be running for my charge pipes. I have this. And I have a next one. And I'm going to be running three inch, three inch piping from the turbo to the inner cooler, from the inner cooler to my intake manifold. I'm only going to be running two of this from the turbo and from the intake manifold, but connecting to the inner intercooler, I'm going to be running a two and a half to three inch coupler. The reason why I'm running the coupler on the inner cooler is for the flexibility. No matter what, if you're not running solid, solid engine mounts, you're gonna have a little engine flex. And if you have the engine flex, guess what? This is rubber, so it can take that little flex that the engine will give. These can't take the flex. So if you run these all throughout your charge pipe and it flexes, this is aluminum, it will break. Just bear that in mind. Um, let me clear this off and then we can chop it up. And that's, that's all I have. And pretty much that's all you will need. The next thing you will need is like a fabricator to mount the inner coolers, do the piping. But if you're knowledgeable enough to do it, you can just buy some eBay piping kit. Oh yeah, I forgot to show you the eBay piping kit. That's what I bought, eBay piping kit. I'm going to post that video in, the, in it right now so you can see it. Um, yeah, I bought eBay piping kits. And, um, yeah, I'm going to send it off to Streetworks and have them mock it up for me and do the fabrication and do the plumbing. Um, they're also going to run all the lines for the fuel setup and they're going to run the lines for the wastegates and blow valve. They're going to do that. And um, that's pretty much you need. That's all you need for a turbo setup. Uh, my goal for the turbo setup is on pump gas. I like me 500 on E85. Let's see what it makes. 600, let's see. Um, but yeah, that's that, that's pretty much it. I am not sponsored by any of these brands that I just mentioned in the video. Yes, I have reached out to them, but I have not got any concrete deals or sponsorship program or anything like that. So that's just one of the side. Um, but yeah, this turbo setup is going to be nice. I can already, I can feel it. I can feel it. <laughs> so that's it for today's video. The next update you will get is when the car is at the shop getting fabricated. I am dropping off the car. Today is Saturday. I'm dropping off the car Monday. So at the time of your of you watching this video, it will probably be Sunday or one of those times. But I'm dropping off the car Monday or Tuesday and um, they will get working on it probably in the next week or two. I'll probably get it back in January or February. I don't really care how long they're, they're gonna take because I need time for myself right now. For the past three weeks, I've been researching, Googling, and you know, getting parts together. I need some time now. I need just, I need some time to relax, unwind while they're working on the car. If they need a question, they'll call me. They have my number. But I just need the car away from me. I need all these parts to be away from me. Anything else that they need, they would have to get it themselves and put it in the bill. I'm not getting anything else. Um, I'm also getting a, a crash bar at the front. Uh, I'm getting a crash bar at the front so they can mount the radiator on it. And the lower part of my radiator support, I think I'm cutting it off so the traction bar can stay there nice and, and, and flush so my radio would, radiator would be on my traction bar but yeah um that's it for now i'll catch you in the next one this is the first episode of my turbocharged series on my car so stay tuned for more and um like share and subscribe please subscribe
please share please like please comment i know you guys probably have a lot of questions on my turbocharged setup or the the options that i went with just leave it in a comment i'll get to you one by one please like the video it helps a lot i want this video to reach a lot of people because i'm i know a lot of people are in the honda game and in the k-series game and want to be more knowledgeable of how to do things so as this video if they if you can get out there please support um and with that being said i'll catch you in the next one it's your boy tevin and i'm out